Hello everyone, welcome back to another Random Friday. We'll be looking at this lot today, so uh, let's get right into it. Okay then guys, so over the years I've collected um, a number of uh, cine cameras. This lot here. This one here I picked up at a boot sale many years ago because it's uh, the next model up from my late father's cine camera. You've seen that on a previous um, Random Friday. Again, this one's clockwork, but this one has a little turret with different lenses on the front of it. I'll have to look at that one another day. This one I purchased second hand. Um, it's a Ricoh. Uh, again, it's standard 8. So uh, you'd load the film in the same way as you did my late father's one on two reels. A great hefty old thing. Not sure uh, when it was made, but it's quite heavy. It's sort of like cast aluminium and what have you. Great big beast of a thing. And this is the last. Um, Cine camera I purchased in the 80s, very early 80s. It's a very nice Canon. Uh, it's a 318M. Uh, this one is Super 8, so it's not, it doesn't take two reels. You basically have a cartridge that you chuck in the back of the camera here. I have uh, the, still have the, uh, the carry case it came with. As you can see, it's only like a plastic thing. And I still have the original instruction manual for it too. Tells you all about using the camera, the parts, etc. It's quite um, concise. Tells you exactly what to do with it all. Very interesting. Anyway, let's take a closer look at the camera, shall we, guys? So here it is, looking very much like a uh, a camcorder from the sort of late 90s when they were getting quite small. Um, it has a handle on the front here making it look like a pistol, so I guess you'd probably have to be a bit careful taking one of these out today in the UK. Crashy Kate created a panic, no doubt. Um, on the top we have the uh, telephoto lens control. You can also do it manually here. Uh, we have the focus just here, from 5 foot to infinity. And there's also a um, macro facility too, which just pushes across and pushes around like so. That takes you into the uh, macro facility. Um, we have a tripod, a hole in the bottom here. This has also got the little filter thing because there's, there's some sort of um, filter included with this. I'm not sure what it was all about. I'd have to read the instructions again because it's such a long time since I've used this camera. But basically take this out here, like so. And we have a little hole in the top there. And as you can see there's a little pin in there. And I think when you screw the, um, the little red button here in the bottom it pushes a filter in line. I'll say I'd have to read up on it again because I cannot remember because it's such a long time ago since I used this camera. Decades. I say we drop the handle down here like so to hold it. Under here we have the trigger. There's also a little um, place you can pop in one of those uh, remote release things that you used to get with the ordinary cameras with still cameras to get a you know your time exposure whatever. But in this case you can do it and do um, an, uh, animation, you know, stop frame, so you do one frame, move the uh, whatever you're filming, click it again, another frame, move the thing, click it. And I've done uh, I've done one of these a long while ago, I don't know what happened to it now. The, uh, I, I'm sure I've got uh, all the films out in the garage or the shed somewhere, but where they are I don't know. So that's the trigger. So the handle folds up. <coughs> Just here we have like um, an indication of how much film you have left. And then we have the little button that opens the back of the camera. We have a diopter adjuster for the uh, viewfinder here because it's an optical viewfinder. There's no little screen on this like my uh, camera that I'm using here today. There's no screens. You just look through here and that's it. So you've got a diopter to adjust for your eyesight. Um, just here is where we put uh, three AA batteries. Not clockwork this one. And here you'd shove in the cartridge because um, Super 8 was a cartridge loaded thing. You didn't have two reels to keep unloading. You just bunged a cartridge in the back and close it up like so and away you go. Here's your viewfinder. Okay then, so I've mounted the old camera on a tripod here uh, trying to give you a better look at uh, what it does. So um, let's see if we can see through the viewfinder. Okay, so it's not the easiest things to film but um, if I swivel the camera about a little bit you can see the uh, right hand side of the uh, screen there. Bring it back again. Here's the left hand side of the screen and you can see that red thing in there. That warns you if there's not enough light for exposure for the, of the film. Um, the zoom lens Still works if I can get out. Where is it? There it is. Right in. You can do it manually. You can zoom in manually, as you can see. Zoom back out again. So it's not the easiest thing to film uh, through here. 
but it gives you some idea what it's like through the viewfinder. If we open the little hatch at the back, you can see there's a little spring here to uh, make sure the uh, cartridge is pushed right down the back of the camera down there. So it's light, tight as it were. If we open this little fellow here, we can then uh, feed some batteries in there. It takes uh, three double A's, there's one, three, there we go. Get him in there. Now, and this camera, unlike my late father's camera, you can actually see the um, the gate down the back there. So if I can get you a picture of that. Okay, so there it is, just there. That's the little gate in there. Um, if we was to pull the trigger, you should be able to see light coming through there. All right, let's give it a go then. There you go. You can actually see the shutter opening and closing. It's also winding the film along as well while we're at it. Now I'd imagine that some of you out there are thinking, doesn't this thing make a racket? Won't that appear on the soundtrack? Well, no, because uh, cameras like this, these ones were silent. There was no um, soundtrack at all, unlike your uh, modern cameras here, which uh, record video and um, sound as well. These old things just recorded uh, the picture and that was it. There was no sound to go with them at all. You'd have to, uh, if you had the money, you could uh, have a more expensive camera with a soundtrack or you'd have to record the soundtrack separately and play it separately somehow because don't forget, you had to get a projector, which I've got somewhere. I've got a Super 8 projector and I've also got my late father's Standard 8 projector too. So it's quite a lot of faffing around with these things, you know, just to uh, record and um, show the pictures afterwards. On the top here we have the uh, tele and wide angle uh, power button but this only works when the camera's running. You might be able to see the uh, lens just here. And what, keep an eye on that. So we're uh, filming away and we want to zoom in. There we go. It's very very slow. There's no multiple speed to this. This is it. This is as fast as it will go. And you just uh, zoom out exactly the same as well. It's obviously a lot quicker to do it by hand. You can crash zoom by hand. Also there was no auto focus on this thing. You had to know the distances quite accurately otherwise you could get it all out of focus. And I've done that a time or two. I think I did it first of all with when I was trying some animation. I got the focus completely wrong so it's nicely animated just completely out of focus. But yeah you have to know the distance precisely. Measure it from, the, from here somewhere and then um, just dial it in like so. Now this other side of the camera we have the on and off switch, the main control which stops it from working. There's your focal plane just there, so that's where you would measure to. Just here we have a little window and that would show you what uh, cartridge you had in there, what speed uh, of film you had and uh, how long it would last. I believe it's such a long time. I don't know if you even get the cartridge to these for any more. In the mid to late 80s I used to edit my own uh, film and I had a little special little editing thing you do because you have to chop it and glue it back together again to chop out scenes you didn't want. Uh, it's not like today's modern video where you don't like the scene so you simply delete it. You had to just chop it out and waste a bit of film, chuck it away. But um, I've got that somewhere and I'll be the editing kit. I will show it to you in a, a future uh, Random Friday along with um, my late father's projector. So what else have we got to look at today then? I have a considerable collection of hammer through, drive through screwdrivers or demolition screwdrivers. As you know they've got um, a shaft here which goes all the way through to the back of the screwdriver where you can welt it with a hammer or in this case use a uh, socket on it to get extra drive. I've got quite a collection here including this uh, bent one here which I picked up at some time in the past. Uh, there's a camasa tools that one. I have another little camasa one here. A larger one here. I think probably I'll purchase this one myself. I don't even know how that is camera, so it's been worn off if it has. Um, I have another one of these that Mrs Rathbone uses. As you can see, she uses it to open paint cans and also, by the looks of it, to stir the paint inside as well. Look, I mean, that's a shocking use of a good screwdriver, isn't it? Actually, looking at my collection of screwdrivers, I don't know what these two are doing in uh, with my uh, hammer through, strike through uh, dem uh, demolition screwdrivers, because these are just ordinary bog standard screwdrivers. So I think it's just the d overall design looks very similar. And that's probably why they're in there. Anyway, uh, some of these, these ones here I purchased as a set from a tool company that I used to work for. And I also got this set here. So what's so exciting about this set here, you're all asking? Well, let's have a look. 
they are massive the gigantic great big uh, hammer through screwdrivers just check this these guys reaching right out into the distance right at the other end of the workbench there so how long are they exactly they are quite long look let's uh, get a tape measure near them these guys here are 21 and a half inches long nearly 22 inches in length yes these fellas are really quite long guys I've got three different sizes I've got this large flat head here there's a uh, medium size flat head here too so we do actually have the uh, striking end just here runs all the way through the handle and I have a um, actually a posi drive end here as well guys posi drive it's normally a Phillips isn't it but this is a posi uh, what we've got in the line of the handles is two-piece construction you have hard plastic here and then a rubber inlay just here they are quite comfortable to use they're slightly flattened on the edges just here rounded just here on the rubber flattened just here on the plastic so they are quite comfortable to use you've got a little piece to put your finger and thumb in just there and we, all of them have this little um, bit you can put a spanner on to drive them very nice they are too uh, the ends all of the ends of them are um, the same they're all like hardened with this like black finish to them which should in theory give you better grip um, I think one of these yes this one here Mrs Rathbone has been uh, using this one for paint again I mean I just can't believe it why would you use a good quality screwdriver of paint especially a great big long I mean she must have needed some serious leverage to get the pot off the paint with this one here but they are certainly very nice screwdrivers the handles are all the same um, the shafts are all the same length but they have varying sizes of um, shaft the larger screwdrivers are larger shaft and they all have varying sizes little hex drives just here so different size spanners can fit on so you can get that extra little bit of torque if you need it I can remember coming across these at the time in the catalogue and thinking to myself wow I've never seen a drive through or hammer through screwdrivers this long before they are seriously long um, I have actually used them a time or two as well would you believe uh, you know you can get into uh, really deep, deep spaces with them and they do uh, offer quite a lot of torque as well you know you can get a, quite a lot of um, talk going on with these fellas okay then guys there's another random Friday for you uh, got these interesting long reach uh, hammer through demolition strike through screwdrivers whichever you like uh, these ones I've had for quite a while as well these ones I've had ages the green ones uh, my old camera decades old now don't know how old this is uh, probably the early 80s sometime maybe yeah sometimes in the early 80s I purchased this I think at the time Mum used to have one of these club books like Empire Stores or something she ordered it from there I think. Hope you enjoyed it guys, uh, hope you enjoyed your visit to uh, Rathbone Manor again and um, I hope you'll pop back another week for uh, another random Friday then. Okay then guys, well thanks for watching and I'll catch you laters. Arrgh.